I just got to Miami. It's really convenient from the international airport. You just take the train system that they have now, the metro train, down to Dayland North, and where it drops you off right here at Target. There's a Hampton Inn Hotel right behind Target, and this is the closest uh, Hampton Inn to Mia Aesthetic. So it's so simple, so easy to, to move around with transportation. And if you wanted to get a car rental, right here at the end of this train station is two car rental companies. I think there's an Avis and a Hertz or something. So they make it really convenient for transportation. Well, let's see what uh, the rest of the day is planned. I do have the pre-op appointment and I'll see if I can get any footage in there. Nice big bathroom with a nice big shower and a seat so I can take a shower after my surgery and I don't want to step over a tub. That's nice. Hi, here I am. Pre-surgery body. Can't wait to change that. <laughs> Two beds, one for me, one for my husband so he can move around as needed and I won't be bumped and shooken. Aw, the TV says my name. That's fun. All right. Well, I have a little bit of time before my pre-op, so I might spend some time down by the pool. Hey guys, a quick pause here. I started my mommy makeover journey with an abdominoplasty, um, breast implants, liposuction of the inner thighs, upper arms, and chin, and just recently removed the breast implants. If you're curious on why I removed the breast implants from my mommy makeover, please check out video three. I will have it linked here. Hey, so I just got back to the hotel from my pre-op appointment. Now, my pre-op appointment was scheduled for 1 p.m. and I arrived early at 12.30 and there were four other ladies in the waiting room. And I filled out my paperwork and we waited a long time. No one was called back. One o'clock came, 1.15 came, probably around 1.20, one of the ladies was called back and it took forever, but I was in that waiting room for two hours before I could get called back. So that was a little annoying. Um, why didn't they stagger our appointments? They, they scheduled everyone for the same time. So if you are booked at Mia Aesthetics, I would su suggest arrive an hour early to your pre-op appointment. So you're still gonna wait an hour, but uh, maybe you'll be the first one called back and you won't have to wait for everyone to finish. So I just got back to my hotel. It's about 3.20 and they gave me some things. They gave me a small bottle of the Hibiclins, Hibiclins, however you pronounce that. And this is to clean the wounds after my post-op appointment. So I have it on hand. I have a larger one. I didn't know they were gonna give me one of these. So it's nice that they gave me one. And they gave me a sealed sponge that will lather up. And this is to be used the morning before my surgery. So I have a surgery time. Tomorrow my surgery is at 7.30. So I'll be waking up early, showering with this sponge and going in. They said my appointment's gonna be about my surgery. My surgery time slot includes arriving there, prepping me, surgery and healing, or I'm sorry. Um, they said an hour in the post recovery area. This is a total of three hours. So they're expecting me to be out by 10.30, um, but I can take as long as I need 
in their post surgery, like recovery area. Okay, so I have instructions. I can no longer eat or drink after 1030 today, which is fine. And I have a post-op appointment, 6.30 a.m. on the following day. And I have another post-op appointment. They were gonna schedule it for Monday, but I'm checking out of my hotel on Sunday. So they said Saturdays are first come, first serve. So they open at 6.30. So I will be arriving Saturday for my second post-op. And they told me I only have two post-op visits, that's it. I thought I had three and I thought I would have to come back in several weeks later for, you know, reasons, but apparently I just have two post-op visit, post visits and that's it. So I did add their CBD oil to my invoice um, prior to coming here. And so I mentioned that to the nurse today and they are out of stock. So they said, if I don't get it at one of my post-op visits, then they will just adjust my invoice. So I kind of wish since I've already paid for it that they would have set one aside for me. I don't know. Um, all in all, my impression of today's pre-op visit, once I was called back there, it was pretty fast. Oh. <laughs> Let me, let me explain something. So after waiting in the waiting room for two hours, and I will send, I'll add a clip of the empty waiting room. It was ridiculous. There was just four ladies and I, and it took forever to call us back. They didn't seem like they were busy. I don't know. There's a lot that I don't know what goes on behind in the office, but anyway. Once I finally got called back, uh, the nurse confirmed my medical history and she took my weight and my height and my blood pressure. And then she told me she's going to take some pictures of me. And so she was gonna leave the room and have me undress, which is typical. But I didn't get any blankets or towel or paper robe or anything to cover with. So when she opened and closed the door, it was just, I was there. Now in my lifestyle, I am a nudist. So I'm used to being naked. Being naked doesn't affect me. But for anyone that's not a nudist, that would have been a very uncomfortable situation. And I suppose I, I can't say it doesn't affect me because I'm completely comfortable being with my nudist friends. But I suppose it affects me when I'm not in that atmosphere. I don't know, just an observation. All in all, uh, my appointment, if I had to rate it, one being terrible, 10 being amazing, I would say it's a five. And I give it the lower rating because of the long waiting time. There was nothing to do. <laughs> they didn't have magazines. There was a TV, but it was on like this pause screen for the majority of the time. And then when it did play, the volume was too low to hear anything. So there was like no entertainment and my phone was dying. So I didn't even have entertainment on my phone. So yeah, they could have done better there. I think staggering the appointments would have been the right thing to do. Oh yeah, one more thing. When I was reading over the paperwork at the very end of my appointment, I noticed that they had my birthday wrong. It, it was off by three days. So they had to correct that. And that was actually on the prescription. So that was sent to the pharmacy with my wrong birth, with a wrong birth date for me. And they also had the wrong address for me. They had my zip code as my street address instead of my street address, you know? So it was zip code, city, state, zip code. When it should be street address, city, state, zip code. So whoever input the information 
was not paying attention. So I guess my overall rating would be four, not five. But I'll take a four in pre-op if I'm gonna get a banging 10, 11, 12 in surgery. So I'm still super optimistic about tomorrow. So excited. I know I'm gonna be in pain, but it's temporary. Now I did add the Xperel shot. So that's supposed to really help me out with three days of pain relief. I'll let you know if it works. All right, that's all for now. See you tomorrow. Mwah. Hey guys. I just got to the hotel room. I'm very thirsty. Steve went to the pharmacy to get the stronger pain medicine. I got the x pearl shot and they give it directly in the muscle. But I don't feel a kick again yet, so I'm in a lot of pain. I feel pain down in the pubic region, under my chin, across my abdomen, and the back of my upper arms. I'm tired and it's hard to breathe. I'm going to try to rest. Hey guys. So it's about 7 p.m. on surgery day. My surgery started around 7. So it's been almost 12 hours. So uh, when you buy the x shot, I found out that they, sorry, I found out that they give it to you directly in the muscle when your skin is open. So it goes straight to the sores. Um, I don't know if it's kicked in um, or if it's the hydrocodone that I'm taking. Um, immediately after surgery was the worst pain all over. I, I don't know if it was my brain getting used to feeling pain or what, but the point I wanted to make was they, they give the shot directly in the muscle at the site and it's multiple shots. So um, if I had to do this again, I would definitely get the shot. I don't know if it's helped or if it's started to help but I don't want it to be worse. So I would always, I would definitely get the, get it again. Um, my husband is with me. He's, there's a target right here, as you guys know. So he's running a target from time to time to get different things. When I packed, I packed easy to pull on shorts and open front shirts, but my drain tubes, they have the opening like below my underwear line, um, pretty far below my underwear line. So I, I can't wear panties and I can't wear shorts. Nothing is gonna be slipping up because the site where the drains come out is very tender. So my husband ran across the street. He's there right now. He's gonna get a sub dress so I can wear just a long flowy dress to my post-op appointments. Okay, what else? Uh, moving around. I, I bought a walking cane and it's been in the car all day. Um, so when I'm walking around the room, the hotel room, I started off by holding my husband's hands, bent over of course, and because of I had work here, I can't really look up. So I'm just like completely hunched over. Um, 
by the time it was my second time to go for a walk around the room, um, I wanted to let go of his hands to see if I could take a few steps on my own, and I could. So I'm getting my balance. By the time it was the third time to take a walk around the room, I wanted to see if I could get out of bed by myself with the exception of he moved the pillows that my feet are propped up. My, my legs are propped up like, like kind of like a triangle. So he moved the pillows and I was able to get up by myself and take a couple steps to him. So yay, progress on day one. Um, I did go pee, but I'm dehydrated. I'm so dehydrated. I'm drinking like, I'll show you. the big ones and I'm also drinking coconut water I absolutely love coconut water the harmless harvest brand specifically anyway so I had a, a big one of those and then a whole one of these and now I'm done for the bottom half of this one so I think I'm drinking fair amount um, but I'm still so dehydrated. And you need like moisture in your mouth to chew food. So everything's just like sticking to my gum. I can't eat much, which is okay. Cause I don't, I'm not starving or anything. Um, I did buy those Boost shakes. And so vanilla doesn't taste bad. It tastes pretty good. Um, my husband shakes that up for me and opens it. So I definitely agree to the people that say you need help. You really do. Let's see, any other updates? Um, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, so if I'm repeating myself, sorry. Um, the doctor, so Mia Aesthetics does their consultations virtually. So I sent them pictures and video of my body before I scheduled it, of course, before I booked it back in the spring. And they booked me for the services. And one of the services was the inner thigh lipo. Well, I go today to surgery day after everything's paid for. And the doctor looks down at my thighs and he says, what do you, what do you want done? like the inner thigh lipo and I kind of shake my thigh a little. He was like, there's really not much here. And if the problem is if you liposuction too vigorously and he went on about something I didn't quite follow, but there's like not enough to lipo. And that did a couple things. It, at one, it made me feel good about my body to hear that a plastic surgeon who's already been paid, so that I don't need to have lipo on my inner thighs. <sighs> I'm gonna cry. And that hurts my abs, I don't wanna cry. But I really liked hearing that. And it also, now I'm gonna be vulnerable. And also just shone light on my poor body image that I had of myself that I'm working on. So I'm so thankful that he didn't do the light on my inner thighs. I'm so thankful that he's not a greedy doctor because some doctors you paid for it, they'll do it. They don't care what you look like. But he was all like, no, if we force this, it's gonna take away the natural curve and it won't look right. So I'm so thankful that Dr. Scrogan is a kind man. So I told him, well, sir, I went ahead and paid for the extra spots of lipo anyway. Do I have bra, bra rolls, like the rolls in the back? And I turned around and he's like, not really. And when I do the, um, the cinching of the waist, it's gonna, probably just gonna go away what you do have. Cause your entire, you know, um, so the wet is changing, so. That's nice, they're gonna change the invoice and I'm gonna be getting a little bit of a refund. That's really nice. 
All right, well, I just got a message from my husband. I'm gonna check that and check in with you another time. Bye. Hey everyone, today is day one after the surgery. And uh, last night I slept really great. Well, first and foremost, let me introduce my husband. This is Steve Kist, my true love, my soulmate, my helper, my everything. Okay, enough about that. Um, today's day one post-surgery and I slept great last night. Um, Steve has been really good with keeping track of my medicine log and draining my drains and reminding me every hour to get up and walk around. So I feel like as though I'm pretty mobile for being one day after surgery. It's 9 a.m., 10 a.m., so we just had breakfast. We had a post-op visit this morning. And, all right, so I paid for two of their massages and I got one of them today. I would not consider that a massage. So, um, the guy was nice. There's nothing wrong with the people. The people are nice. It's just the processes seem a little, slightly off sometimes. So their massage today was just rubbing my back with, um, I don't know what it was, but it kind of smells like a biofreeze. And there was definitely a technique to it but it was so short and superficial and they charged $60 and he wasn't in the room for more than 15 minutes. And that was talking to me before and then bandaging me up afterwards. So was that a massage? I don't know, <laughs> um, but live and learn. Um, Steve's gonna do some lymphatic drainage massages on me later with those ingredients that I showed you in the previous video. Um, that's all I have for right now. Hey babe, did you wanna say anything? Yeah. So at this particular location, they didn't let me sit in the waiting room or go with my wife into any of the rooms uh, or operating room or doctor rooms, or none of those. Um, yeah. Post visits, pre visits didn't matter. Uh, essentially, uh, I felt like an unwanted and unwelcome person there. Um, it wasn't just me. Um, everyone who goes there, the spouses were kind of treated the same. Like, you're there, they acknowledge you, but they don't want you there. They really don't. Um, they didn't really give me a whole lot of instruction in terms of post op care which I thought they could have capitalized on that and utilized the services of the spouse to help with that. They, I thought they would have given me some instructions and that kind of thing, but they were all about just giving that to um, my wife who was under the influence of drugs pretty heavily, doesn't remember all the things they told her, um, and that's what they rely on. Um, I do want to point out that uh, at my pre-op appointment, they had me sign off on the instructions, so I have it in um, text format. I have it like a paper so we can read through it. Um, but it's nice to be told by the nurse, you know, and be shown instructions of just reading it and hoping you're doing it the right way or whatever. Yeah. And um, I think the... Th one of the things I was worried most about during this whole experience was just the fact that I, I kind of felt like my wife didn't really need the procedure at all. Um, I felt like she was and is perfect just the way she is. Um, but she really wanted this and wanted to go through with it. So like in all things, I support, uh, her wishes and her desires. Um, I was just praying that like nothing went wrong and that that she came through this okay because it's definitely an elective um of course after the surgery was done and she was out i felt much better um and then of course comes the aftercare which it seems like we're going to be doing some aftercare for about a week or two um it's pretty extensive right now as long as we're still doing the the drainage and that kind of thing um, I think once we move past uh, drainage, I think the post-op care will become um, more of self-care at that point, and then just me kind of helping around, um, taking some of the load off at the house with the kids and things like that until uh, she's fully recovered. 
Thank you, babe. Mm -hmm. I love you. Well, that's all for now. See you guys soon. Hey guys, so today is day two post-op and not much has changed. This is the head brace that they gave me or the compression garment for the head that they gave me for the chin lipo and it is completely un uncomfortable. Uh, we ordered a different one from Amazon so that's going to be delivered today so I'll be switching this out. Uh, this is a one size fits all and it's on like the tightest setting, if you can tell, like the Velcro goes to about here. And like, I have this much holding on. And then down at the bottom, uh, it's, they didn't have small, medium, large sizes. It's just one size fits all. And this, it's just so uncomfortable. And it's pressing my ears on. And after hours and hours and hours having my ears pressed in, that actually, that hurts, okay? That's uncomfortable. Um, so I would recommend if you're having chin lipo done, like probably you should invest in one of these things, um, just in case the one their doctor doesn't, or the doctor provides, you don't like it. Um, it's completely uncomfortable. Anyway, I'm going to try to move on. Um, this is the compression garment for my arms. It has, um, clasp, like a bra clasp down under my breast. So it's under here it's oh my breast is open i'm not wearing a bra or a shirt so i'm just in the hotel room so it's just me um it's kind of like a hot mess situation <laughs> but it is what it is um the sleeves feel great um you can see the side i keep bleeding it doesn't look very pretty and i have bed pads down to protect um the bed this side not so much Um, so, yeah, that's that update. I would show you what's going on down here, but you'd see my boobs and you two won't allow that, so sorry. Uh, but you, well, let me see what I can show. Hang tight. All right, so I just pushed this over my boobs. So you can see I'm wrapped and I have drain tubes. I can't show you where they come out of because it's literally down in my pubic area. Um, look at that waist. That curve right there. Little curve right there. That's nice. That's really nice. Let me fix this again. Yeah. Day two so far is just a matter of reminding myself to get up and walk around and waiting. Uh, there's not much I can do. When it comes to standing, I am very much hunched over still. When it comes to swelling, um, I kind of see it in my hands. I see it in my arm, my, my wrist area. I see the swelling. I don't feel very swollen, so I consider myself blessed in that manner. My thighs are, they seem normal to me. My legs seem normal. I don't, I don't think I've have any swelling down there so that's that's lovely um when it comes to bruising when we took off the binder there's definitely of course there's definitely bruises up and down the side of my torso um yesterday after my my shower steve uh massaged my very gently rubbed my my skin with the arnica oil the ginger massage oil that i showed you and I love that stuff. It smells so good, and it has a nice, a nice texture. Um, kind of like, it's not really greasy. It's just, it's like a nice soft texture on the skin. So definitely, would recommend that product. Uh, what else? Yeah, just a matter of reminding myself to be mobile and to drink plenty of fluids. So here's day two. See you at day three. Today's day three post-op. I had my second post-op appointment this morning and they removed the major tape along my incision and changed out the smaller tape. 
I also had my second lymphatic massage today and this one was much better than the first one. And I forgot our candle activator device. He brought candles when he came back and he forgot a lighter, so. Like I said, candle activator device. He's being silly. Um, yeah, this massage was much better than the first one. This lady, I felt like she knew what she was doing and I mean, it hurt, but I was actually draining, you know, like leaking out of my hole. Um, the other guy didn't do that at all. I think the other guy was just too afraid to make people hurt. <clears throat> so he was gentle, but it was like too gentle because he didn't do anything. So at least I got one good massage until like, you know, now I'm going to go home and maybe get some more. Uh, so even though we're paid in this hotel for another couple nights, we're going to go home early and be more comfortable at home. So just wanted to give a update before we leave the hotel. And that's all I have, I think. Um, okay, so when it comes to stretching, I am able to sit with my legs straight out in front of me now. They don't have to be bent, so there's progress there. That's all for day three. I'll see you tomorrow at home. Bye. Hey everyone, so today is four days post-operation and I made it back home yesterday. So we just took a shower and, well, I just took a shower and had some breakfast, took my medicine. And so now Steve is giving me um, lymphatic drainage massage at home from what he can do. Now he um, went to school for some, what did you do, babe? Just took pre-med classes, babe. It doesn't right. make me any. No, no, he's not. He's he's not. But he did work in the ER, and he d he was EMT certified and all this. So he's got a gentle touch and knows a, a few things about the body. A few things. I give him more credit than is due, probably. But anyway, um, so this is what we're doing for our at-home lymphatic massages. Um, I'm over the bed, kind of like standing over the bed, kneeled over, you know, and. Babe, explain what you're doing back there. Um, well, underneath the layers of the skin between the fleshy tissue and the and the fat is gonna be all this, where the bruising occurs essentially, is gonna be all this fluid that's being collected by the squeeze bulbs. That fluid drains to those drain locations. Um, and sometimes it helps to move that fluid around to get it to go to those drain sites. And so if you do it right, like especially like under the arms, if you push the fluid towards the drain site, you're gonna get a bunch of it to come out. And so it's kind of like you're accelerating the drain process. Um, your body will absorb it eventually, but the difference in time between absorbing it without massage and massaging it and getting it out of your body quicker is a huge recovery time distance. It's not that your body can't do it on its own. It's just that if you massage and drain it out, you're less likely to get infection um, you, and your body will recover quicker. Plus other uh, YouTube videos that I watched, I believe it was Dr. Miami or might be confusing that with a different doctor, but the edema, which is the swelling, if it's left in the body for too long, if it doesn't get reabsorbed or pushed out can cause, um, fibrosis which is hard little knots and it's just it solidifies and it's stuck and it you have these weird bumpy bits under your skin so it's really important to um plan for lymphatic drainage massages because you're gonna swell and i am so thankful that my doctor gave me some drain tubes yeah i feel like a cyborg sometimes with these tubes coming out of my body and they hurt sometimes but I've seen some videos where ladies don't get drains and they're just swollen and their body's just puffed up and it's painful. I can't imagine. I can't imagine being in that situation. So um, that's a question to ask your doctor if you're searching for a plastic surgeon. Am I going to have drains? Opt in for drains. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and check in with you guys later. Hey guys. So still day four. Um, after the massage, I felt so good. Um, I was just feeling just better. And I had better range of motion as well. So before my shower, I was lifting my arms to see how far I could bring it up. 
and this arm was about here till until I reached pain. But then after the massage, I can bring it all the way behind my ear. That's awesome. So, wow. <laughs> um, and it doesn't hurt to do that. That's the point. Before it was hurting, I couldn't even do this before. Um, so, yay. And then on this side, um, let's see. I guess I could bring it to about here before the massage. And now I'm not that far. About here is when I start feeling pain. So that side's still a little tight. Um, but yeah, those massages really help. What else? Um, range of motion down below. I, I'm not standing straight yet, um, but I am able to lay with my legs straight and my, you know, back inclined before I was with my knees bent. Um, and sometimes I feel as though even that stretches, so then I have to go back to the knees bent position, so that comes and goes. Um, when it comes to feeling like my, like my nerves, um, the incision area, it, it, for the most part, everything feels kind of tingly down there. Right below my belly button, though, I don't feel anything. Um, Steve took a few different items uh, with different textures, some soft, prickly, hard, and whatever, and was kind of just rubbing it against my skin on my stomach and by the incision line and on my thighs. And some of the scratchy things actually felt itchy. They didn't, they didn't quite feel like how they were supposed to. Um, the prickly thing felt cold, not really prickly. There was something that, that felt like velvet. I don't remember what it was. It felt so soft to my skin, but it wasn't soft. It was weird. So my my senses down there are messed up right now. Um, and uh, below my belly button, I can feel vibrations, but not that something's touching it. Um, so I'm gonna have lunch. I think I'm gonna have a steak and then I'm gonna take a nap because I'm getting tired. So yeah, here's day four, and uh, I feel optimistic and happy. Of course, I am taking 5-HTP, which is supposed to keep your mood elevated, and it, um, so that might have something to do with it. The reason why I'm taking 5-HTP is because I've heard that some people who have these types of surgeries into a depression after a week or two in that normally subsides a week or two later but my hope is to avoid that now there are some times there's moments that I feel like oh my gosh did I break myself <laughs> what did I do to my body am I ever going to be normal um, but those moments pass and like right now I feel optimistic and trust the process that's all I have to do just trust the process. See you all next time. Hi guys. So it's the next day. I guess that would make this day five. Um, what do I want to talk about today? All right. So pain wise, I'm still taking pain medicine. I'm taking, um, hy hydro... hydrocodeine uh, 5 mixed with Tylenol 325 and I don't take it every single day but I am still taking it from time to time um, one thing that I probably should have done before going to surgery is researching food options I knew that I had to have a low sodium diet that was a given and um, I figured it would be kind of easy, but holy cow, there's so much salt in foods, <laughs> like a lot of salt. Um, so, I mean, I've been eating plain rice, um, steak with no salt. We were able to find chicken stock, like just the soup, chicken stock, low sodium 
and I think it was also low sugar or something. And that one was like 180 milligrams of sodium. And that's all the, the lower side because everything else is like 400 milligrams of sodium. And even tortillas, we tried to have tacos last night, homemade tacos, and my ground beef didn't have any taco seasoning. And I had lettuce and tomato with it and a little bit of sour cream. And we looked at the, t the bag of um, soft taco shells, the tortillas, and there's a ton of salt in soft taco shells. Like it's tor a tortilla. Anyway, so I had mine with plain rice and so it was low sodium. But wow, I didn't realize there was so much sodium in all of our foods. I wanted to point something out. Um, they talk about having a high protein diet after surgery and low sodium. And so um, they talk about drinking boost drinks and so I'm like, okay, yeah, high protein. But then I look at the, the label in this one serving, in which, by the way, I talked about cinnamon before, it tastes pretty good, 220 milligrams of sodium. That's a lot. So I limit myself to one of these a day because, you know, sodium is gonna make you swell up and hold on to moisture and water and all of that. And, Anyway, so I only have one of these a day um, because of that, but it is high protein. This is 20 grams of protein in one, so yay. Um, but there is something. My husband bought this for me as a treat. Now, originally I wasn't going to have any sugar or anything like that after my surgery because, you know, I watched in a video that sweets can kind of feed into infection, and so I was like, okay, well, I'm not gonna do any sugar. Um, so my husband came home as a surprise with my favorite dark chocolate, and this is raspberry. Intense dark, like I really love that bitter dark chocolate. I don't like milk chocolate, and I really don't like white chocolate, but dark chocolate, I love it. And so I saw this, I was like, thank you, babe. I'll wait until I'm healed to enjoy that. And then a few days go by, and yesterday I, I looked at the, the packaging zero sodium and actually one protein gram and you know 15 carbs uh sugar is 12 so i could have one of these but there's no sodium in this so yay no sodium in my sweets what the heck anyway wanted to point that out that figuring out what you're going to eat uh before you go into surgery is probably going to be a good idea so then when it's after surgery, you're not wondering, what am I gonna eat? Now, the first couple days after surgery, I didn't even have an appetite. And even now it's, I'm not, I haven't, I haven't actually felt hunger. You know, when you're starving and your stomach is growling and you just need to eat something, I haven't felt that yet. And I haven't been eating a lot. Uh, so, sorry, I keep covering the camera. Um, all right, what else? My sleep has been, pretty good. I, I sleep pretty much through the night. I do get up to go pee, um, but I haven't been tossing things and turning in pain. I'm pretty bored, honestly. I like to be active. I like to get up and go and do things and have a clean house and unpack as soon as I get home and fill in the blank, but I can't do much. I'm pretty restricted, so like the bags from going to Miami and coming back, they're still not unpacked and I, I have to give myself rest. So I'm restricting myself um, for better outcome, for better healing. It's okay if the place is a little messy, if the bags are not unpacked yet, That's it will get done. <laughs> I have to remind myself that. On another note, when it comes to standing up, I am getting better when it comes to standing straight. So very first day I was hunched over like this. Well, actually like this because I, I couldn't look up because of my chin. And it, it takes time. Everyone has their own, their own timeline of how long it takes to stand straight again. But I think I'm about, I was like this on surgery day. I think I'm about like here. And I would show you in a mirror, but I cannot because these drains are still attached to my body 
and these drains are coming out of my body down in my pubic region, so I can't wear panties. So, that's the closest you're gonna get. Um, uh, yeah. Once these drains can come out, then I can start showing you my side uh, profile. But in the meantime, they're kind of restricted. Well, let's see what I can show. The waist, very nice. Let's see about the scarring. Uh, when it comes to the fluid and the grenades, they call these grenades because they kind of look like a grenade. Um, anything yellow colored or straw colored is the lymphatic fluid and it's good that it's es escaping my body because it's not, you know, my swelling's going down. Anything that's red colored is blood and anything if if anything comes out that's milky that's a sign of infection and so if there is an infection um i need to call the doctor right away i haven't gotten anything milky which is good um anything super dark red is the sign of a blood clot being dissolved and so it's okay it's just i haven't gotten that um i'm just learning some things that's what I've learned. Um, when these things are 25 cc's or under in a 24 hour period, that's when I can remove them. Now, wow guys, this particular place, they don't even remove the drains. They're like, on my post-op visit, they're like, okay now, you need to find a doctor or a clinic to remove your drains. Do you know where you're gonna go? I was just put on the spot at post-op. Like what? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll call my doctor is what I told them. Um, but honestly, I'm gonna have my husband give it a shot. Again, he has a little bit of experience um, working with medical stuff and um, I know he can do it. <sighs> he likes to... Okay, so I get, I get my lady area waxed and my legs waxed and from time to time waxing down there can cause ingrown hairs. And so he likes to take flashlight from, you know, every other month or so, and with the um, tweezers, and he goes through and tries to find all the little ingrown hairs and pulls them out, and he likes that sort of thing. And so this has nothing to do with that. So now I'm just rambling, but he can do this. Oh, I actually met him three years ago when I was healing from my breast lift, and I had like literally had my breast lift done less than a month before I met him. And so, um, if anyone knows our story, uh, we knew right away we were meant to be. It was immediate. It was like, when you know, you know. And so, um, he m moved in with me a week after we met. I know that sounds crazy, but when you know, you know. Um, and so I had an infection actually from my breast lift three years ago. So he helped me with all of that. And so this is not our first rodeo when it comes to healing after plastic surgery together. Yeah. All right. That's all I have for right now. Day five. I was able to wash my face and put on some moisturizer. That was nice. Being able to clean my face. Oh, wait. Uh, that's not all. Um, after my surgery, my face was all bumpy-like. And it was weird. It was like, why is my face bumpy? And why do I have a sore right here? I was bleeding. What happened there? I don't know. Anyway, okay. Um, okay, here's something else. Compression socks. Let me turn my camera around. Compression socks. They make me wear these compression stockings. And I didn't have my legs waxed lately. They said I have to wear them for 10 days. But there's like no toes and so my feet get cold from time to time and so I try to cover my toes 
but then my toes just somehow pop out and it's uncomfortable so there's that so I suppose um, if I could go back and do this over again I suppose if I could go back and do this over again I would buy compression socks that have closed toe and I would be more comfortable and I actually have two pairs of these, so I'm not wearing the same pair of socks for 10 days. <laughs> We're switching between two, just like I have two sleeves. I have different head, uh, what is this called? Compression garments. Now this is the only waist center that I have, but inside my waist center, I have some foams. And so I can replace those out. That's all for now. Hey everyone, so today is six days post-operation. I am starting to get itchy, so obviously the healing is kicking in. That's a good thing. I am still swollen in certain areas and producing fluid in my drain, so I can't remove those just yet. I'm still bored out of my mind, resting. I'm trying to find little exercises I can do, like minor stuff. For example, raising my arms like 10 times just to keep my range of motion going. Otherwise, I would be stiff. Um, doing the, little, the circles with my arms, that sort of thing. Um, standing in place and like taking high steps. Nothing to, nothing too strenuous, nothing strenuous at all. Um, I've tried stretching a tiny bit, like touching my toes in front of me. Um, that is, is not, um, cause I'm already bent, right? So you'd think being able to bend more forward would be easy, but it's actually not. Um, it kind of crunches the stomach and it, it's diff, it's just different. So working on that, not trying to push myself in any way when it comes to that I don't want to open any sores. So yeah, I feel emotionally a heck of a lot better than I did a couple days ago even. Being at home really helps, staying hydrated helps. Having a partner helping me out with things is very helpful. All right, so I wanted to give you visual. This is seven days. This is the bruising and the scarring that I have so far. Uh, surgery was one week ago. So here's from my chin liposuction. Here's from my arms. At seven days, of course. Here's the bruising underneath. We've been doing lymphatic drainage, drainage massage at home just about every day. And here's my tummy tuck, abdominoplasty. And the bruising. And this is about how high I can stand for straightness. Alright, see you guys all for a one or a two-week update in a week. Bye.